And so it is my great pleasure to invite my colleague, Paul Sturton, to begin the program. Thank you, Peter. Well, it is uh, rather gratifying to see such a large crowd after what really has been a year of relentless celebration of the Bauhaus. I rather felt that this would have put many of us off, but clearly we're not too tired or reactive or turning against the Bauhaus yet. Indeed, like everyone, I feel as if I've lived with the Bauhaus for most of my life, although I actually only visited uh, Dessau after Die Wende. And in fact, I am i wouldn't describe myself as a specialist in German architecture and design, which is really a very recent uh, interest of mine. Nevertheless, I feel as if I've been aware of the scholarship and the shifts in attitudes towards the Bauhaus for most of my life. Coming to it initially, of course, like everyone in Britain does, through Nicholas Pevsner, for whom all aspects of the writing of 19th and 20th century art, architecture and design seem to converge on Dessau. You cannot avoid it, no matter what Pevsner wrote about. The teleology always ended up back somehow with Gropius and Dessau. And indeed, it's in a way, constantly pushing against that or seeing the gaps or appreciating that actually your view of history was being constantly manipulated back to the Bauhaus that constantly raises questions. Now, for my purposes, in a way, the real landmarks recently were two major exhibitions. The MoMA exhibition, of 2009, marking the 90th anniversary of the Bauhaus. Uh, and I'm pleased to say that two of the curatorial team for that exhibition are on uh, the, or will be at the podium today, Barry Bergdahl and Dara Keyes. But that exhibition for me was one of the most profound and very clear, uh, let's say, oppositions to Pevsner, in that Unlike the received opinions, it gave a, a more or less equal attention to the Weimar Bauhaus, to those aspects <clears throat> that many of the modernist, particularly architectural and design historians, had dismissed as an aberration. Bringing out people like Lothar Schreier, who, for most of the constructivists, was seen to be everything which had stopped the Bauhaus from achieving its real destiny. But the other landmark for me was a, another exhibition soon after that in the Barbican in London, which brought out to my view quite a profound uh, attitude towards the Bauhaus that our keynote speaker, Paul Betts, touched on last night, which is that regardless of what was designed, produced at the Bauhaus, the really important thing was that it invented a new way of life. Young students of art, design and architecture began to act differently, to dress differently, presented themselves in ways. And in that sense, the Bauhaus, to repeat what John Heskett said nearly 40 years ago, the Bauhaus had hardly any impact on design, but it hugely changed the way in which people taught design and thought about design. Now, I think we'll be coming back to many of these points over the uh, next few hours, as long as you can stick with us right through till five o'clock. Uh, 